This is a book review of The War on Normal People by Andrew Yang. Andrew is a different presidential candidate. He's cool, hip, young, and you'll hear about him because he's somewhat an outsider. Yang gang, hashtag let Yang speak, hashtag math, make Americans think harder. And is he really being blacked out? He was cut out from TV. He's been making news just like Tulsi Gabbard. He can skateboard like Beto, a bit commie, can be due to his Chinese background. Youthful Asian looks, you don't see many wrinkles, somewhat JFK-like. Mistrust, maybe. Chinese background, the soft power is the future, avoiding wars at all costs. A turnoff can be Andrew wants more government control. And you have to think about it, where does this money come from to finance these dreams? Or our dreams? The changes, the rich, the elites, taxes. He proposes VAT taxes to finance this universal basic income. He does recognize, and he comes from that background of being an entrepreneur, Silicon Valley, New York City, and Washington connection versus flyover nation. So with most of the power in Silicon Valley, New York City, and Washington, what about the other people? What about the normal people, the average Joe and the Janes? He's somewhat charismatic because he seems like a good guy. All these politicians want to unite. We are in this together. He's easy to talk to. He's standing up because he not really wants power, and I do believe that. He's an outsider. He recognizes institutions are screwed up. And you can learn this and understand the cycles by my book review of the fourth turning on cycles. And when institutions become corrupt and ignored, revolutions occur. Institutions become ignored. Kangaroo courts. A so what mentality. Who cares? Some highlights that I notice if he were to become president or just positives is I do think that we could have better racial relations due to the American past. We had Obama who was black and all the other presidents were in lighter complexion, someone who's different. He can't come off, they might think of him as a weak Asian guy, a nice guy, passive Asians, a good smile, probably smart, he likes math, a numbers nerdy guy. He downplays capitalism and capitalism isn't perfect, especially toward the environment. He's human, he's real, he's down to earth, and his autistic son has brought him connected with the youth and the human condition and understanding health. He could use the best of tech, artificial intelligence as well. And by working, it's cheaper and better. And UBI could change the whole tax system. It circulates in the businesses and local economies. Malls are closing and it can have a trickle down method where everybody can at least get a little ounce of beet juice. His three big policy changes are UBI for universal basic income. And that would be 1000 a month for adults, adding up to $12,000 a year. Medicare for all which can be complicated where there's going to be setting prices and human centered capitalism, not so much an Ayn Rand individualist capitalism. And his big thing is preparing for the wave of automated workers. Personally, I think there are always going to be jobs. Robots aren't going to take everything away. There's always going to be some type of job. People aren't that dumb. There's always work. Some pros are he's racially aware. He's a real person. You can sense that from him. The freedom dividend will give $12,000 to everyone. It's security, it, it'll give them a chance. This will answer some basic problems as in poverty levels and as well as some of the homeless issues that are a big issue. He sounds fair, that's the biggest pro from him. He does recognize men's issues, understands and sees a single mother problem. Labor participation for males are issue. Not all the males are working or achieving excellence. There's a high female college graduates, which will strain the debt system. And we need to build stronger men. He did grow up on video games, so he recognized the video games growth, the issues, the, the waste of time that video games can have. And they're going to double in time in 10 years, and it will be a problem. People aren't really getting married. Stable jobs are harder. And females are less reliant on men. While most females will be desiring an economically attractive men, that there are more difficult men's issues adding to this. He does want federally mandated time for new mothers. And who's going to pay for this? That's the issue. And I do like this Frederick Douglass quote from this book. It is easier to build strong children than to repair broken men. That's a very inspirational quote. And I have to mention, he does recognize Yuval, the Sapiens book. And I reviewed all his books. I'll have them in the links below. Also, he mentions the troubles with the white America. 
especially in the middle part of Flyover America. J.D. Vance and the Hillbilly Elegy. Eventually, I'll take make a review of that. College can't be refunded with no job and cost. Can we even declare bankruptcy in the U.S. for those? That's going to be an issue, too. An interesting point he points out is that employers aren't hiring down. They want the best. So what are we going to do with all these workers? And I do think he downplays the human spirit in the typical worker. That there's always talent up there or it can be brought up. They're not just dumb zombies. And hypergamy can be an issue in the economic system too as well. Some last thoughts is this will get people more chances. People are more capable than what we think. Self-reliance is a virtue. Some of the positives of the left wing are it considers everyone and the have-nots or a temporary boost, such as what happened with the hurricane in New Orleans. Give them a boost. And they don't waste time calling people lazy or putting people down in terms of the have-nots. The cycle is important. Excellence, freedom, and self-reliance are more important. I do not think he has read Anne Ryan books. And one thing you do to beat the game is by not playing the AI game. Do what is best for you. Uh, some other videos you could check out is he does know about animal style in and out. So he's very relatable. And you could check that out in the Eric Weinstein video that I'll post down below, as well as you can check him out on Joe Rogan's show. Andrew Yang can appeal to the young and the socialists. Maybe someone like Hassan Piker, who is funny as hell sometimes. I watch him on Twitch a bit. However, he does get lost in his socialist stuff, but he is funny. It doesn't matter that Andrew Yang is not going to be present, but I think this is just a good movement to understand that we want real people in office. We need real people to lead. He is the most natural candidate, I would believe, a good human being, and you have to imagine a nerd president. And consider the war on normal people. You put yourself almost in a victim complex. Don't see it like that. Just see it as it is. Seek and go for excellence. Don't chase it like a normal person or expect to just happen just for breathing. That's why I put in the thumbnail. Excellence is a virtue and individualism is king. Thanks for listening.